सो प्लास्टिक हिंज एलिमेंट्स आर देयर इन ई टैब्स एंड अदर प्रोग्राम्स विच आर ऑफ दीज टाइप्स ऑबियसली फ्लैगजरल हिंज कैन बी इन वन पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन ऑफ क्रॉस एक्शन और अदर ऑल्सो बिकॉज देर आर टू मोमेंट डायरेक्शन फॉर अ थ्री डायमेंशनल एलिमेंट सिमिलरली देर आर टू शीयर डायरेक्शन वी एक्स एंड वी वाई यू कैन से and there is one axial direction along the length of the member and there is a torsional direction the rotation about the axial axis right so uh, these are different types of hinges in in e tabs now i'll show you in a moment uh, directly what are these hinges so there are hinges which are uh, for one particular degree of freedom and there are hinges which affect two degree of freedom at the same time those are called interactive hinges so i'll come back to that e tabs types of hinges again but let's quickly discuss about where we should assume uh, the location where we should assume those hinges where we can lump the nonlinearity right if i make a bending moment diagram of a of a typical frame it will be like this the bending moment will be maximum either at ends or at uh, mid span same is for shear force it will be maximum at ends uh, but if i make the same bending moment and shear force diagram for beams and columns against lateral loading both the bending moments and shear force uh, bending moment diagram will be maximum at two ends right shear force diagram you will see that it will be uh, constant throughout the height of the column if the loading is applied only at story levels if this if the loading is applied between story levels then that there will be a jump in the shear force diagram but otherwise uh, it will be constant now let's assume a case where you have both uh, uh, the the gravity load as well as lateral load uh in in many of the cases majority of the cases you will have the maximum bending moment uh, which is at the ends right and this is uh, where you can expect the maximum flexural nonlinearity right the ends have the maximum bending moment so the deformation associated with bending moment will also be maximum at ends which is beam rotation right so if we assume at the ends for example here or here if we assume the nonlinearity to lump at these locations and the relationship between moment and rotation m and theta we make it nonlinear using those hypothetical zero length plastic hinge elements then we can capture flexural nonlinearity at these two locations right so Uh, the location for the default location for plus flexural plastic hinges is uh, the ends of your beam and columns right you uh, when you, if you if you for example lump the nonlinearity at the midpoint this is not a right location where you should expect the most inelastic action the most inelastic action is is at the corners so therefore for you directly define the bending relationship between bending moment at the end which is called end moment and the rotation at the end which is called end rotation theta so a non linear relationship between moment and rotation at the end is the default choice uh, for the definition of plastic hinge uh, for flexur for moment for shear if it is all along constant along the length then you may have a shear hinge at the mid mid point of your column or a beam right so because shear is is going to remain constant throughout the length so you can have for example at the mid point the the point which is a shear hinge a shear hinge will have a relationship between shear force and shear deformation as a nonlinear so v versus gamma relation you will be providing program will be following that relationship right so uh, this is one example now to just reinforce that concept that this is your column or a beam it has uh, some bending moment at the ends 
and it has a end end rotation theta also right so directly the moment versus rotation behavior the blue line non linear relationship that can be given as an input to this uh, this red dot here as well as on the other end right so now that particular flexural degree of freedom will be controlled by this blue curve it will no more be controlled by m is equal to e i over l multiplied by theta or any linear relationship between moment and rot rotation right it will be controlled by this blue line which you are giving so now the responsibility on is on you to provide a more accurate curve which is actually depicting the capacity of your beam or column so now you are responsible to calculate this my this mu or this m cracking if you want to include that you are responsible to tell the program at what rotation the beam is going to collapse at what if it is unload from this particular point what stiffness it should follow if it unloads from this particular point what stiffness it should follow all these behavior you have to provide as an input the backbone curve of m versus theta and the cyclic behavior also uh, the unloading and reloading rule you have to tell the program and then if you tell it accurately the program actually will simulate the damage in your beam or yielding in your beam more accurately right so the discussion actually will boil down to where from where we will get these relationships if i want to make axial load versus axial deformation behavior as non linear from where i will get that non linear behavior right if i want to uh, make the flexural behavior as non linear from where i will get the moment versus rotation behavior right so i'll discuss that issue maybe later but let me just reinforce that concept uh, in your minds so in the figure in, in at the right c figure is telling you that uh, red is the experimental results there was a real column which was applied with the loading and uh, with the loading bending moment and unloading bending moment and the resulting rotation at the ends was recorded uh, and then plotted the the red line the blue line the dotted line is the model prediction that if you introduce plastic hinges at both ends and uh, give the capacity accurately and then apply the bending moment versus uh, uh, bending moment cycles for example the model is able to exactly follow the experimental results so the model is actually uh, mimicking or you can say is able to uh, manifest the results of uh, experiment right and this is the ultimate goal of non linear modeling so another figure where you see that this particular beam in this particular structure at both ends uh, there are two hypothetical elements which are introduced they are the lumped plastic hinges and they should be of moment type moment versus rotation type and they they will have this relationship as an input which actually have two parts one is the backbone backbone means the actual curve uh, and then the cyclic behavior which is called the hysteretic rule or hysteretic uh, uh, relationship which tells the program that if the if the direction of loading is suddenly reversed what stiffness it should follow to unload and then if it is reversed again what stiffness it should follow to reload right so you can model the cyclic degradation for example as the cycles of loading unloading uh, are uh, uh, applied the structure should deteriorate the structure should degrade that behavior can only be uh, accounted in a computer model by giving this kind of a behavior in which the curve is degrading with each cycle right so when you give this kind of a hysteretic behavior as an input the program knows that when there are loading cycles it will degrade your beam or degrade your material or degrade your non linear action versus deformation behavior so all the cyclic behavior cyclic strength degradation cyclic stiffness degradation cracking yielding all non linear phenomena they can be accounted using action versus deformation relationships 
uh, which were not possible in a linear model to account another depiction same thing an, an rc frame with uh, two plastic hinges at two ends of all the beams and for each plastic hinge uh, the relationship between moment and rotation m and theta is given as an input uh, the cyclic behavior also and monotonic behavior also now uh, see uh, the material capacities like fc prime fy and amount of steel cover cross sectional dimensions they all will actually contribute to this moment rotation behavior right so this is what it it means when i say that we are lumping the whole behavior at member level so the the material non linearity or material capacity is contributing to moment rotation curve at member level so if we have a high fc prime concrete we will have a, a higher my on, on this curve if we have a high fy steel we will have a higher my on this curve right so now the difference between fiber approach and hinge approach should be very clear there we directly uh, modify the material and it automatically accounts for all other levels here the effect of material non linearity and material capacity is manifested already in the form of this curve right so i'll show you in maybe next sessions that when you will construct that curve for your beam or your column uh, you will be requiring all the exact amount of steel and clear cover and material properties and cross sectional dimensions everything is required to construct that right so that behavior at material level is lumped at directly member level right so another important aspect is the seismic energy dissipation that uh, it is actually how much area is enclosed by these loops if the area is more uh, that particular beam or column to which this hinge is assigned will be able to dissipate more energy compared to if that area is less right so um, if the material is such uh, that uh, it dissipates energy more we will be having a different unloading reloading rule which will have a different area under these loops right so it this this a, this loading unloading rule or hysteretic behavior depend on many things right so uh, same depiction that now we have a beam Uh, on the left hand side we have an el elastic frame element uh, which is having few degrees of freedom at both hands that elastic frame element is governed by these constant numbers on the other hand right hand side you have a, a beam element which have two hinges at both hands and those hinges have moment versus rotation behavior so uh, a complete beam element a non linear beam element for this approach will be actually made up of two plastic hinges and in between will be a linear elastic element so in between is linear element but the non linearity is lumped at the ends of these two that at the ends of that linear element right so this point is non linear this point is non linear and in between is linear right so this is the uh simplicity of this plastic hinge approach that it doesn't uh, assume the non linearity all along the length of the element it just assume it to be lumped at the certain locations only and in between these two locations is a linear element right those uh, plastic hinge elements are zero length elements which means they don't have any length of their own they are points hypothetical points Uh, in your model uh, just to introduce to tell the program this relationship to give this relationship as an input we need to have uh, a hinge at that point right so hinge only have this action versus deformation relationship as an input 